All right, so we're getting down to it. Uh, not too many days of class left. Um, next week, we will mostly work, uh, though in all likelihood, I'll probably give one last lecture on perspectives and maybe some Photoshop and whatever, trying to pull it all together, um, which most of you will probably ignore and just work on your own stuff. But at least I'll try to talk for a while uh, about something, and it might be useful to somebody. Anyway, uh, today we're going to do the last of the line drawings which is a section. Again, very similar to what we've been doing. Plans, elevations, we're going to do all the same steps. It's repetition. Um, so you'll see me go through the same process again. The idea for wasting three classes doing this is that you'll be able to do this when you get to 220. Um, because a lot of people are in 220. A lot of people do their modeling in Rhino. And you get to the end, and you have to be able to make drawings out of it. And so I really want to make sure that you guys know how to do this uh, as you go forward. So again, I'm going to emphasize it today. Uh, I would say that sections are probably the most important line drawing that you draw, because it's how we experience space as architects, um, or as people, for that matter. When we're in a building, we see ceiling heights. We understand spatial relationships in that dimension, not in plan. So really, it's one of the most important ones to be able to do. Um, it's also a little on the challenging side, which is why it's the last one in the series that um, I'm going to go through today. Uh, but again, it's all the same steps. So we're, we're doing the same sorts of things to get there. Uh, I have my file open. Just like when we did the plan last class, um, this time we're going to end up destroying the file. So I made sure that I did a save as um, you know, before time, beforehand. Uh, so that I'd be able to um, destroy it, not, not damage it. I also uh, left my settings set at, at a nighttime rendering. I don't know that that's going to be a good idea or not, but I'm kind of curious what the lighting will look like when we do the material overrides down the road. So I'm going to go with it, but we'll see. Maybe I'll, I'll regret that decision. I'm not sure. Um, so because I did uh, the section rendering going through the building this way, I'm going to go ahead and cut the section the opposite way today. Uh, just for the for the practice of it. So first thing that I'm going to do is zoom out, and then I'm going to hide the ocean because I don't need the ocean. And I can either do that by selecting it and typing hide, or I can just turn off the ocean layer altogether. The next thing that I'll do is to create a plane. It'll be a vertical plane that is larger than everything that's left. Let me turn on ortho here like that. And then let's move it down so that it truly intersects everything. Hold on a second. Let me move V for vertical, and we'll drop it down there. So now it's definitely intersecting everything. I need to push it back to where it intersects with my building. So let's go ahead and get it close, probably right about there. And then I'll fine tune it in the top view so that it's going through where I want it to go through. I'm going to cut through the first stacked set of uh, bedrooms or rooms or whatever they are, uh, looking toward the staircase and the room in the middle. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm not going to cut through the furniture itself. Um, I might move it back a bit, though, so that we can see this a little bit better. I might move it to about let's do right there. That looks pretty good. And so now that I have that established, I'm going to do my uh, ST create to temporarily view this section, make sure it looks the way I want it. So I have section tools already installed. If you don't have section tools installed, you'll have to install it. Uh, I apologize if you keep having to install it. It's the nature of the lab computers. Um, the hope is that it'll be permanently st installed at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and type ST create, which will create the section. Select objects to section. It's going to be everything except for my plane. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Uh, then we have a direction. Um, we're going to do a direction of the Y axis this time instead of the X axis. Uh, and I do want my solid modes to be surfaces, which it is. That's good. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter to accept the options. There we go. And now I have my object right there. My arrows are pointing in the direction that I want them to be pointing. And I'll go ahead and click. And it will create ST00 for me. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter at that point. So I end up with ST00 as a layer. Let's create a new layer for uh, section 00. 
And let me make that a sublayer of section 00, just to try to stay organized. I'll also make a sublayer for this uh, section 00 plane so that that plane can go on this layer as well. So let me change the objects there. And then we can turn that off, which is good. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. And let's look at the section that I just cut in this view. So let's do ST uh, view sections. And we're going to view ST00 in exterior view 2. And there we go. Now we can take a look at it. So there's a few things that I need to clean up. Just like last time, I end up with some holes. We're going to clean those up. I'm going to work on the ST00 layer. So let me make sure it's unlocked and is the current layer. There we go. And I'm going to fill in with some surfaces here. So that we have some surfaces as part of the rendering here. So there you go. There's one. Go across. And I'm just working on filling this in. That's not in the correct place. There and there. Drop that all the way down to the bottom. Go across the middle here. And I have one there, I have one there, and I have one up top. So all of that looks pretty good. Now I need some ground to be established. So let me go ahead and make sure that I have um, a curve along the edge. Looks like I've created one there, and I have one there. I need a piece that connects these two, though. So let me go ahead and draw one from that endpoint right there. We'll go down, we'll go across, and we'll go down to right there. Oh, come on. Snap for me. Gotta love it when it's not just me, right? All right, we'll go there. Should be my curves. Let me join that. Let's see if I can fill it these two. Fill it with a radius of zero between this curve and that curve. All right, so now I have one open curve there. The advantage there is that I can do an offset of this. So let me look at this in the right side view. Set view, I'm going to look at right here. And then I can offset by 100 feet. There's the offset. And then I can loft those two together to create a temporary surface. If I were to look at this in shaded view, Right, we can now see that I filled that in so it's a nice solid solid surface. Okay? So if we're looking at this view, right, everything inside looks pretty good. All of my all of my lights and everything are showing up the way I want them to. All right, I'm reasonably happy with this. So now we're going to we're going to go through and actually establish the view for the sectional rendering. This is not a sectional perspective. It's a true section, which means it's just like an elevation view. So, let me go ahead. Oops. Let me ST clear all views, so everything's like that. And then let's go ahead and start, because I'm, I'm uh, oriented with my normal north, south, east, and west directions, let's go ahead and try the left view. And that is, in fact, the view that I'm looking for. We want to make sure, with nothing selected, that my projection mode is set to parallel, which it is. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit more, maybe about like that. Okay. Now that I'm in this position, I'm going to go ahead and type ST. Uh, let me save the view first. So let me go to Set View, Named Views. And I'm going to call this Section 00. Say OK. 
And with that saved, with section 00 saved, I'll go ahead and um, go to set camera, show camera. And then we'll look at it in one of my other views. So let's look at it uh, in a perspective view. So let me switch. Let me go to set view. Like this. And now I can use, and I'm going to draw that uh, rectangle. So let's go ahead and show this in Ghosted. Now let me show it in wireframe and see if I can see it. Yeah, it's always hard to see that point. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my rectangle corner to corner. I'll go from that point up to that point. Maybe not. Let me do a three-point rectangle. We'll go from there to there and down to there. That is a surface, not a rectangle. Hold on. There it is point to point down to that point and then I'm going to scale this by 2 from this corner. There it is. Okay, so now I can make section 00 large again and I have just the glimpse of that rectangle around it. Remember that's going to be my view when I get into Illustrator. So now I need to ST view sections with section 00, zero and this is going to be viewed in um, the section 00, zero layer or um, view. So section 00, zero. and there we go. Now I'm seeing it in this view. So at this point, I'll go ahead and do a save. So let me go file save because I'm going to do the make 2D. We know that that can take a while. So with that, I'll go ahead and do make 2D. Select objects to draw. I'm going to go ahead and say all. So I select them all. And then I'm going to deselect these chairs that were back there. Oh, it's not going to let me. Let me see if I can turn off the chairs. And there we go. Just try to save the, the bandwidth uh, and the time. And then I'll go ahead and press Enter when I'm done. And that brings up the Make 2D Drawing options. So we do want to do the current view. I'm going to show hidden lines and maintain source layers. And we'll go ahead and say OK. And as with before, this can take a while. right? So uh, I'll pause the recording. We'll let it do its thing. Actually, it's going fairly fast right now. There we go. So because I took the furniture out. It went a lot faster. So let's go ahead and look at the top view. And we should see there's my view. We'll use this as a trim. There, perfect. I'll trim. We'll get rid of the pieces we don't need. All right. Once I'm here, I will take this group. Ah, once again, I didn't unlock. So, so fun for me. I get to go through and unlock everything. So let me expand everything. I believe I have everything expanded. So let's take all of this. And let me see if I can just select it all at once. And let's make sure it's all unlocked. Perfect. OK, so now that I have it all unlocked, I should be able to select it. And I still don't have it all unlocked. Oh, there's some more right there. All right, 
Let's see if I get it all this time. There we go. All right, so let me go ahead and move this so that it's at point zero comma zero. Zoom selected, there it is. And I'll go to File, Export Selected, and we're gonna export it to Adobe Illustrator. And we'll save it into today's folder, 230, Fall of 2016. And this is uh, section 00. Under Options, same scale, 48 to 1. We'll go ahead and say OK. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. And then OK. And that then writes the Adobe Illustrator file. We'll come back to that file in just a second. So now I need to create that clay rendering background of this particular piece. So we're going to go ahead and go back. We'll again use the section 00 view, but let's look at it in this exterior view. And so I'll go ahead and show it as shaded. And I'm going to turn back on my section plane, my large section plane. And I'm going to explode all of the blocks. And remember, this is a permanent process that's going to mess stuff up. But I'm going to SEL block instance. And then I'll type explode. There we go. And then I'll deselect an SEL block instance again. And I'm going to keep doing this with explode until there are no more blocks. Select block instance, explode. All right, there are no more block instances. So now I'm going to do a split. So I'll type split. Select objects to split. It's going to be all except for that large plane and except for the ST00 pieces because that's not going to need to be split. Okay. So I have all of that done. We'll go ahead and select objects to split. Select cutting objects. It'll be that really large plane. And we'll let it do its work. All right, so it did its split. I'm going to manipulate this in the top view now. So let me zoom back out here. All right, so everything on the left half here is going to be um, the see-through material. Everything on the right half, I'm going to create a basic white material or a light gray material to use for the rendering. The glass on this half, I'll leave as glass. The glass on this half will be transparent. So let me set up those materials first. So first off, I'm going to need to create a material, and it's going to be uh, a standard material. And I'm going to rename these just to be clear um, with SEC00- dash, and then we'll call this white or uh, gray. And I'll make that light gray. That's a basic light gray material right there. I'll create another new material. Right click, create material, standard. This is going to be a completely transparent material. So SEC00 transparent. And we'll change the transparency of this material to be white, which means it's fully transparent. I'll go ahead and load the see through material. So let me load material. I'll go to my flash drive and resources, V-Ray, V-Ray materials, special materials, see-through. 
and we'll load that. And then the last one would be just the plain glass, which it's already been assigned. So I'm not going to worry about that one, so to speak. OK, so now it's a matter of starting to select things. So if I were to select this, this can be a little bit hard to select to make sure that you get everything uh, because it's difficult. Sometimes switching my, if I go to set view, instead of top, if I go to bottom, no, that's not going to help. Let me go to set view. Let me go to top again. Uh, I was going to try to reverse the sides because it's always easier to select going this way than it is the other way. So instead, we'll just have to zoom in. And I'm going to try to select everything. Looks like I missed just a little bit right there. All right, so everything seems good. I don't want that piece selected. All right, so I have all this. I'm going to turn off the glass. So it's going to be the glass railing, the window glass, and that window glass. So I have those three layers turned off. I'll go to my materials, and I'm going to apply the see-through material to all of this. So let's find see-through. There it is. I'll right click, apply material to selection. So see-through has been applied to that. Now I'll go back with nothing selected, and I'll select the glass. So let me select the objects there. Let me select the objects here. And let me select the objects here. All right, so they're all selected, but I don't want anything on the right side here. I only want the things that are on the left. So there they are. I'll go into my materials. And I'm going to apply the transparent, this SEC00 transparent, apply material to selection. Great, so that's applied. So everything on this side is good. Now I need to do everything that is on this side of my section cut, except for that. There it is. And all of this, except for the glass. is going to be assigned the basic gray material. Apply material to section selection. There it is. Then I'll go back through once again, turn on my glass so that it's back on. I don't have to change the glass material on this side. I'm OK with there being some reflections in that. Okay. The one other thing that may be useful is I may end up deciding that I want this ground to still be shown. Or I may not. In the case of this, I'm going to go ahead and leave it transparent because I put a wall, you know, piece of material down underneath my building, and I think that will work. Let's go ahead and make sure that the um, sec ST00 layer has, we'll turn it back on, and I also want to make sure that the material is assigned to it. So let's go back to my gray and let's apply material to uh, layer, and it's going to be. If I can find it, ST00. And so now that gray is applied to that as well. Okay, So all of my materials are, uh, are applied correctly. Let me go ahead and switch my view into my section 00 view. There it is. I'm going to turn off my section plane so that we see my building. And then we'll go ahead and go to my V-Ray options. And I'm going to get the view aspect here to make sure that it, it works if V-Ray doesn't tank on me. There we go. Unlock, get the view aspect, lock it. It's really small right now. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and render it. All right, doesn't seem too bad. Seems like it may be worth worth a try. The shadows may be a little bit deep, in which case I can, I can adjust the um, camera settings a bit. So we could say maybe 50. OK, so I have this set. I do also want to make sure, and I'm going to show you this part of it tonight, or today, uh, that under my VFB channels, I have selected RGB color, alpha, and background there. 
I have a few others selected. We'll do those next week when we do the perspective view, where I'll show you how all of those work in Photoshop. Those are selected. Let's go back to my output settings here. And we can beef up the output size quite a bit now. So maybe we'll do a width of 2,000. So let's do a height of, there we go. And so now that that's established, we'll go ahead and do a rendering and see how it looks. So it should move fairly quickly because there's not much to this. I think it's a little bit too bright, so I'm going to stop it and make an adjustment there in my options. Let's go camera. Let's go the opposite direction. Let's go like, let's try 250. Remember, I can always take this into Photoshop afterwards and, and adjust those settings a little bit. OK, so I have that set up. Uh, we've always been clicking on the single disk to save. If I click on the multiple disk, it's going to save all those channels that I selected. The channels are available in this list. So if, for example, I switch from RGB color to alpha, we get a difference of what the background looks like versus what's the foreground in white and black. Does that look an awful lot like a Photoshop mask? Right? So these are, these are cheater things. There's something called uh, material ID. Well, it's not going to show up very well. Let's see, render ID. Render ID will show up where each object is rendered in a different color. So we can select color ranges and select just the ground, for example, or just a piece of siding. So these are all helpers for when we do Photoshop collage work later on. So all of those will save if you click the multiple disks button. And so I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll save it to today's folder, though I'm not really going to use many of them today. So let me go into. Um, Sorry, today's folder. There we go. And so this is uh, render section 00. I'll click Save. And you can see in my uh, file browser here that if I go to today's exercise, it saved all of those um, channels for me at the same time, which are useful down the road. I'm going to go ahead and open section 00 in Photoshop. And I want to convert this so that it's all in black and white. Uh, so let me go ahead and open with Photoshop. All right. And I'll go to my image, or excuse me, layer, new adjustment layer. And I'm going to do a channel mixer to convert this to monochrome so I don't have that color anymore. Uh, and then I might also do a layer, new adjustment layer. And I might do a hue and saturation adjustment. 
to change the overall kind of lightness of the image, something like that, because it's going to go behind my work. Okay? And so I might not want it to be quite as strong. But again, it's up to you as to what's, what works for you. We can leave it as this black for right now. I'll go ahead and go to File, and then Save. And let's save it as a JPEG. And I'll add VW to it so I know it's the black and white version. And we'll say OK. Now it's time to open up Illustrator. So we'll double click on Section 00. Maybe. And let me press Control-0, or excuse me, Control-minus so we can see the whole thing. First thing that I'll do is I'll click on the Artboard, which is a tool that looks an awful lot like the cropping tool in Photoshop. And I'm going to adjust the Artboard to match up with my overall drawing. So we'll make that match up, and it should snap roughly to your drawing. Once I have that established, remember, because I did my export right, with a bunch of uh, individual layers, I want to organize my layers a little bit. So the same thing happened last time where I had lots of layers. I'm going to make a new layer called Visible. And I'm going to make sure that everything that has Visible in it is selected. I'm holding down Control right now. And I'll make sure all of those visibles go on the visible layer. And then I want to make sure that I have a layer called hidden. And all of everything with hidden in it gets put on the hidden layer. So now I have hidden and I have visible. And this will let me work with all of them at once, but I can also expand the layers and select individual groups of just the walls, for example, or, or something like that. So let's look at the visible first. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select all the visible objects. There they are. Let's make sure that all the visible objects are black. And they're doing a great job of not turning black for me. There you go, they're all black. Let me come back and again make sure that I select all of them. There they are. The reason they're showing up as different colors is because the layers themselves are different colors. That's why I wasn't registering that. Let me go to my stroke menu here. Let's change the stroke maybe to 1.0 point. We can take a look. And eh, they might end up having to be a little bit thicker than that. But we'll start with that. And here's, here's an example. I could go through and I could pick, say, anything that was a wall. So let's go wall. See what else? Exterior walls. And anything that was a wall, I could bump up the thickness of those, you know, to two points, for example. And those walls get a little bit thicker. So you have to decide which pieces need to be thicker. Uh, generically, if you stick with everything being the same, uh, you're generally fairly safe in that process, but you can get more specific as you go through. So now that those are all done, let's do the hidden lines. So I'll select all of the hidden lines. We're going to make sure that the color of the hidden lines is a light gray, like that. Then we're going to go into Stroke, and I'm going to change the stroke to 0.25 points. I'm going to make it dashed. And I want it to be a fairly fine, so I'm going to do maybe 2 by 2. And then we'll deselect, and we should see. I don't know if you can see it on the projector. No, you can't. Of course not. I can see it great on my screen. Let me go ahead and uh, come back here, select them all, 
and uh, let me change the color to be a little bit darker so that you guys can see them. There you go. So now you can see them. So it adds a certain level of complexity. Looks like these two lines really should match up with the lines that are over there. Let me take the eyedropper and make those match because they should have been hidden as well. Let me zoom back here a little bit. And so now you can get a pretty good sense of what's happening. Looks like I really should clean up a few things, like this line probably doesn't need to be there. This line doesn't need to be there. That line doesn't. This line should really be shorter. About like that. That line can go away. That line can go away. Let me press Control-0, and we can start to see this as it lays out. I also don't need this line that goes across there either. So you can see I'm starting to create a pretty dense, good quality line drawing that I can work from that has, has good information in it. Now I need to go through and do a little bit more. So let's go ahead and bring in that sample image that I'm going to use as my backdrop. So let me create a brand new layer. I'll call this layer background. And I'll move it below the visible and hidden layers. With it selected, I'll go to File and then Place. And we're going to bring in that background black and white that I created. And let's see, where did I put it? Ah, it's black and white. We'll place that into, into the thing here. And then I'll go ahead and transform it. Remember, it should end up being exactly the same size as the artboard because I went through the effort of exporting that rectangle while I did it. It just does not want to snap for me. All right, so there it is. I want to make sure that I'm seeing my lines in addition to the, the section cuts, because the lines are really more important. So number one, I think this background is a little bit too strong. So I'll take the background, and I'm going to come up here on the opacity, and I'm going to drop that opacity to maybe 40%, something like that, 50% on that image. Right, so it's much lighter, which lets the line drawing part show through, because that's the more important piece of it. Right? Looks like it maybe needs a little bit of tweaking. Looks like I was a little low. I just used the up arrow to get that correct. And this gives a certain amount of shadow and depth to this drawing, which I think is a useful backdrop. Okay? If I press Control-0, we can now see that in, in better context with the overall piece. So I have the line drawing. I have the, the nice background that's giving me just a little bit of texture and fill in. If I was unhappy with how the, the sections were shown, right, now would be an opportunity to change it. In, in Illustrator, I could, I could make things darker or lighter. I could make the section cuts darker or lighter. I can go through, I can adjust individual line weights and how those line weights are shown. But notice in this background rendering, I'm getting all the little bits of shadow that are being cast. So it's a little bit more than just your basic background image. The other thing that can be helpful is to add some textures to uh, maybe the ground or the section cut or something along those lines. And I can do that by using some of those pieces that I, that I worked from. So let me go ahead and I'm going to create using, let's do, I'm going to use my visible lines. I'm going to make a duplicate of that layer. So let me. Right click, I'm going to say duplicate, if I can find it. There we go. Duplicate visible. It's doing such a good job of doing what I want it to do. Well, maybe I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and just place in uh, something. So let me go to File and then Place. And let me drop in, I'm going to use one of these as an advantage. So I'm going to use this shadow one. And let me place that in. No, I don't like that. And go to File, and then Place. The 
lighting one might work. Yeah, this will work OK. So let me press Control minus. I'll line up this corner, I hope. There we go. And then I will make this bigger. And I'm going to make sure that this ends up on the background layer rather than on the top. And actually, let's make it on its own layer to begin with. So let's put it on that. There we go. We can turn the rest of this off, and I'm going to work on just this layer. With this selected, I'm going to go up to my transparency window, which is right here, and I'm going to make a mask of this transparency window. Then I'm going to work with the mask. So I've clicked from the, the image itself over into the transparency. And from here, I'll go to File, Place, and I'm going to drop in a grunge texture. So let me go back to my flash drive. Let me go into my resources, grunge textures. And let me make this a little bit bigger. Let me rotate it. And this grunge texture is only going to apply to the areas where that lighting has happened. Okay, So now that I have that applied, let's drop the opacity down a bit, maybe 40%, something like that. It just gives a little texture, uh, maybe a little less. Can you guys see it? Yeah, that works on the projector OK. I'm going to go back to the main image, and I'm going to change it to be a multiply. And let's go ahead and turn back on my other layers, like that. And so now, rather than just being a stark gray, press Control-0, I have a little bit of texture in the section cut, in the lighting, in the shadows, but not in the white part. So there's a contrast there. If that's still too strong, remember, I can adjust the opacity down even further. We can select this, and I could drop that down. You know, a little bit less, something like that, until it feels like it's the right amount. Okay. Similarly, I could take my background and I could adjust that background down just a little bit more, so that it wasn't so strong. Okay. So now that I've done all that, I have my nice line drawing set up and ready to go in Illustrator. We haven't talked about the output from Illustrator. Remember that I created this drawing as uh, a quarter inch equals a foot, so it is in scale. So if I took this drawing and saved it, so if I went to File, Save, this is now to scale as section 00. If I drop it into an, an InDesign file, let's say I wanted to make a presentation board, as long as I don't scale it, right? if I just place it directly in my InDesign file, it should be set at a quarter inch equals a foot. I can then scale it by half if I wanted to, and it would be at an eighth inch equals a foot. So you guys see how I'm trying to keep the scale consistent at this point. Uh, which is which is definitely important. One of the problems that I've seen in studio work, 220, etc., is dealing with the scale issue. And you can do the collages, you can get the drawings, but they end up going on the board not to scale. And when you're doing this, you want a consistent scale. All of them should be the same, etc. So I'm I'm trying to emphasize that a little bit. Okay. So there's the line drawing. We can then drop it into Illustrator. Uh, if I wanted the contours, I could export those as well. But it's really it's turning out pretty well. I'm starting to have a pretty good um, line here. I might take, say, this line, and I might beef that up so that we have a stronger section line. So maybe at 4, because that's being cut through. Let's take a few more of these. Let's take that, and this, and this one, and let's make all of those 4. Let's take this and extend that over to meet it like that. And that starts to make it a little bit more realistic, right? a little bit deeper line. I could do the same thing on the cut through the building. I could darken that up a little bit. So there's always some fine tuning to be done. But we're looking for certain options. So let's take this one. Actually, that one shouldn't be hidden. It should be solid as well. Let's match it to 
that wall. And then let's go ahead and take those, these, and we could beef all of those up a bit. Perhaps that needs to be thicker, that needs to be thicker. You know, there's some, there's some level that's the right level of thickness to achieve that section cut look. Okay? In reality, I think I would probably clean it up a little bit more to make the section cut completely transparent. So I might take um, this line, shorten it to be right here. I might take this line and shorten it to be right there. So the section actually flows all the way up through the building. Right, get rid of this little piece. Get rid of that because it's clouding it. That, that. Get rid of that piece. That piece. Shorten that to be there. Oops. Shorten that to be there. Get rid of that piece. Right. I might get rid of those little pieces there. But you see how this is starting to read if I subtract out? It's reading much more as a section because the section cut goes all the way through without the, the extra pieces in it. So there's always the potential for a little bit of fine tuning to make it really feel like a good quality section. Obviously, the thickness of these lines doesn't match. So I could spend a little bit more time working on it, but I think you guys get the idea of th the things that I'm doing to try to enhance this and make it feel like a really good section. Okay, so I know it's a lot to take in. I know this is repetition. I've done it several times, but again, I think it's something that's very, very important. Remember, for your final, you need to include two drawings, a section, an elevation, a section, a plan, a plan, an elevation. Any combination is fine with me, but I want to see actual drawings, okay, because I think that's a, a skill that you absolutely have to have coming out of this class. All right, are there any questions? No, I know you guys have lots and lots to do, and, lot, and you need the time to work on it. I'll turn you loose to do that. Um, is a question for everybody, or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So by drawings, you mean just like this? Right. So by drawings for the final, I want this. Like, this would be a great example of a section drawing. Uh, if you wanted to do a plan drawing, that's fine. If you wanted to do the elevation drawing, that's fine. The point of this uh, drawing is that I see actual lines, okay, as opposed to a rendering, okay? Worst case is you give me just the make 2D, exported and tweaked a little bit with the, the hidden lines made hidden. If you can do the clay rendering behind, the end result is going to be a lot better. Okay? Some of you have more or less skill. You didn't take 135. At least with me, you didn't take it. So you might not feel comfortable in Illustrator yet. That's OK. Um, Illustrator is not an official required part of the class. So I'm more than happy to help you next week get through the Illustrator part of it. But um, don't panic about, I'm not going to grade you on that part. But I want you to be able to do the make 2D part. Uh, and then when you take 135, Illustrator will make more sense. All right, same thing. OK. Um, any other questions? No? All right. <laughs>